Hey there everybody and welcome to a very special 40k subscriber edition to Tabletop Witchcraft where I'm going to be creating my very first piece of 40k Necromunda post-apocalyptic terrain that's coming up this week on Tabletop Witchcraft. Hey there and welcome back to Tabletop Witchcraft. This week is a very special 40,000 subscriber video that I'm going to do here on the channel and I thought what better time than at my 40,000 subscriber milestone to do my very first 40k piece of terrain. I've had a lot of requests over the past year and a half to do this type of stuff and I figured now's the time. I've incorporated a lot of really cool stuff into this video, resin, LED wiring, her starts molds and casts. So it's a really neat, fun build that incorporates a lot of things. You can grab the plans in the description below if you want to follow along, or you can win a set. All you have to do is leave any comment down below for this video and follow me on Instagram as that is where I will announce the winner next Friday in my story. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's go grab the supplies and let's get crafting. All right, so we're going to kick this build off with a set of plans. If you want to find them, they'll be in the description down below. You can help support the channel that way by picking them up just a few bucks. But if you don't want to, you can still make this build without them. It's just going to make it a lot easier. So we're going to start off by taking two rectangular shapes of half inch XPS foam. And I'm using the stencil from the plan just to mark out the perimeter around the large rectangular piece. We're going to put a metal grate in here that we're going to run some pipes down through later on in the build. Now we can score it with an X-Acto knife and using a clay sculpting tool, we can pop out that foam and then it'll allow us the space to insert this granny grating right into that slot right there. And we'll use that same piece of a stencil to obviously mark out the size of the granny grating. Now, we're gonna start working on the circular pieces to the base of the two vats that are going to be the first two vats that the sewage gets pumped into. And in order to make these, we're gonna use this circular jig by Shifting Lands. And you want to just keep spinning it after you have your cut all the way around the perimeter. That way it keeps the wire from sticking to the foam as you're shutting it off. Now this tube that we're going to use to fill up with a bunch of goop is actually a container that the shingles came in from my haunted house build. But you can use any clear plastic and glue it together to fit in the uh, slot right there. All right, now we're just going to cut this up with the X-Acto. And you can see in the background, I have a smaller piece that I just grabbed right there that I didn't cut all the way through. That's going to be the cap for the vat here. And we obviously need two bases and two tops because we're going to make two vats. Now, I wanted to make use of some uh, dollar store foam core in this build. So that's what we're going to make this little housing unit out of where really most of the sewage is going to get processed and it's also going to be our container unit for all of our electrical components to this build to turn the lights on and off. So once you've made a little rectangular box out of it, we're going to cut that piece out. And now we're using some Hearst Arts molds. And I'll put an um, item in the description below as to the molds that I used in case you want to pick them up. And just using a pin vise, we're going to drill a hole halfway through this little door section and being really fast because this clay piece right here is a really big like heat sink and the hot glue cures super, super quick. And I showed this method of making sure the polarity is right on the magnets uh, in one of my previous videos. So uh, I'll put a link up above uh, to that one as well. Now this is really fun because now I just grabbed a bunch of these cast pieces from again, her starts and I just put them on the table and kind of just started placing them on wherever I thought this would look really cool, wherever I thought, you know, this piece needed to have, you know, just a little extra detail. I had no idea at this point in the video how I was even going to paint this whole thing up. And that was actually one of my biggest challenges in this build was the color scheme for this when I was done. Now, this is just a little greeble that I got from Terraintronics. He's been a very big help recently with all the electrical components. Check him out on YouTube as well. And now we're going to cut this little stencil out from one of the plans. We're going to follow the red line on this piece right here. This is going to be the path that our LED strip is going to follow 
to light up the blue tank of water and the two brown tanks as well. So once we have that stencil on there, we cut those four shapes out and then using a hot wire knife, we're going to burn in those channels. And I'll put links in the description below to all of my Amazon links for all the materials that you see in this video in case you want to pick them up. And what you want to do is make sure that that LED strip sits flush with the foam so that it doesn't you know, affect uh, this piece sitting on top of the other rectangular piece of foam when we're done. Now I'm just going to texture the bottom section. I went around the entire perimeter about an eighth of an inch down. We're going to have a metal plate sitting around this whole thing. And the bottom, I figured that would just be like a concrete slab that this substation was sitting on. Now this is an acrylic sheet. I've cut four sections out and this is what I'm gonna make my uh, final reservoir tank out of. It's really clear stuff. I tried using some dividers from a Plano case and that wasn't bad, but they're not really clear. Not like this, this is like glass. And I wanted something that you could really see through real nice. Now I also tried looking online for the proper glue to glue these acrylic sheets together. And there's all kinds of stuff, but you can see how little I'm using here. This Gorilla Glue was absolutely amazing. Using this small 12 inch framing square, um, you make sure that the corners are exactly 90 degrees and um, it held rock solid, this super glue. So I would just recommend using the super glue. All right, now I just cut a few strips of some dollar store foam core that's gonna go around the base of this tank. And then this is a half inch piece of XPS that we're gonna make sort of a little cap or a roof out of for the top. And just how we scored the grading around the main section, we're gonna do the same for that little piece as well. Then grabbing a bunch of metallic paints. Again, this was one of the hardest parts, trying to figure out how to add some color to something that I thought was gonna be mostly metal. But you'll see how it turns out here in just a few. So I mixed some black metallic and some gunmetal together for a lot of this build, which you can see top left. And then I dry brushed it with like a light silver color. And then I went with some typhus corrosion and riser rust to add a bunch of rust to everything. Once that was done later on in the video, you'll see that I added a splash of color um, with some Vallejo paints as well. Okay, now we're getting ready to do some uh, pouring here with some resin and we need to seal the bottom of these vats. So I just took some clear plastic from uh, packaging from a toy and make sure that you get hot glue around the very edge and bottom of that completely around it otherwise you can have a big mess on your hands. Press it down firmly and here's a cool little trick. Use the edge of your glue gun to melt that clear plastic into the hot glue and you'll get a really really good seal out of it when you're done. And there's just another small piece of packaging plastic that I put on the bottom now for this tank as well. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit of tacky glue around the perimeter of this cutout. That way we can slide our grating right into it. And it doesn't matter if the glue, as you can see, it looks a little chunky here, a little globby, if those are even words. It doesn't matter. We're gonna press this down into place. And again, this glue dries clear and you're never gonna see it. And using the clay sculpting tool, we can kind of manipulate that grating to get it in so it's nice and level around the entire perimeter. And you can see why I painted all of this beforehand before I glued everything together. It makes it a lot easier. Now grabbing some burnt umber, I want to make some trash that's going to go into the first vat of this sewage septic treatment system. And I just took some of that burnt umber ink, mixed it with a little bit of water, and then some paper towel, and I just let that dry in front of my dehumidifier for maybe 10 minutes. And then grabbing some skulls and skeletons from Barthel's Marvels over on Etsy. I had some of these painted up for a while. We're going to add a couple of those into this as well. And it has some Envirotex kicking around. I'm going to use that to fill all these vats. And you want to be very careful. All I needed was that one drop of ink. And you can see how much color that added to all of this resin. And I'm stirring it extremely vigorously on purpose because I want a lot of air bubbles into this. It's like it's getting sucked up from the sewer and it's going to be really bubbly and foamy. You can see all the bubbles in there. 
I'm just gonna pour it right over all that trash that I had glued to the side. Here's the second vat. You can see I added just a very little tiny bit of ink to this one and I'm pouring it very slowly and I had mixed this slow so there are less bubbles in it and it's more clear. The same as this one, but here I just added a little bit of blue to the water because we all know water is blue. I think that's what Luke over at Geek Gaming always says. I don't know, you'd have to check with him. <laughs> all right, so now we're getting ready to add the LED lights into this build. And I've designed this so that, you know, if anything ever goes wrong, if the strip burns out or whatever, you can replace it. So I've added some magnets to this piece of foam that will snap into place on the other base. So I don't think I showed that, but there are magnets here on this, which again, will allow it to snap into the other base. And uh, we can always just pull this off and replace that if we have to. And I'll put a link uh, up above to my LED wiring video, which will show you how to um, add that switch to that LED strip, uh, as well as a couple other things, which is really cool. Now back to our Hearst Arts uh, pieces. I tried painting these with a brush and it was kind of streaky. So I just grabbed my airbrush and uh, it really came out real nice when I was done here painting these up. And you can see, you don't have to do 100% coverage with that yellow or any color you pick. We're gonna dirty these up and this is supposed to be really grungy, really grimy. So um, yeah, you know, just have fun with it. All right, now we're gonna hot glue this cap onto here. Now this is where you have to be careful when you start gluing all these pieces to the base because we're dealing with pipe sections and you want things to line up properly. So be very careful that when you glue those two tanks on that the pipes match up on the top. You can see that little piece of pipe bottom right. That's been glued onto the base of that other tank. I'm now gluing this housing unit on here and then I'm gonna add a little bit of glue to the uh, Hearst Arts pipe, pressing that into place as well. I'm gonna keep working my way around the craft Again, that tank with the blue water is not glued in yet. Just a little bit of hot glue on the pipe that's going on that housing unit. Now I've added some glue to the bottom of the tank and a little to the other end of the Hearst Arts pipe and we can press it all into place, locking it together, ensuring that it all fits properly. Now, a few minutes ago, I put a link to my LED wiring video. This tool is an absolute lifesaver. It gets rid of almost all soldering you have to do when you're working with single LEDs like this. Um, I definitely recommend, if you've ever thought of working with LEDs in a video, please check that video out. It will get rid of a lot of fears you have working with LEDs in your crafts. It's a lot of fun. It's a really cool part of crafting. Okay, now <laughs> is my face here. Uh, this actually took me a few tries to get this right on film because it was kind of a pain in the butt to get that LED in there. But we're just gonna press the LED in it's another cool little light covering I got from Terraintronics. I'm gonna paint that up, place that over the light. You can see I painted that little control panel down there as well. And now we can operate that with an on off switch. All right, now we gotta dirty this pipe up. We're gonna do this simply by stippling on some known oil over all of the pipe. We're also gonna take some of this known oil and we're gonna place it around where all the pipe connections are, around the tanks, just to make it look like things have been leaking and dripping over time. For these pipes, I liked to use the Agrax Earthshade. You really can't tell much of a difference on this build between the Nuln Oil and the Agrax, but I figured I'd just give it a shot here since the liquid in these containers was brown anyway. All right, now as you saw earlier, we're going back to the Typhus Corrosion to add some rust to all of these yellow pipes you know, you wanna get some smear marks, some stippling, and then again, I put some Ryza Rust over those two. Now, I really thought that some of these Hearst Arts pieces needed some more color around the craft. So I painted some blue, I did a little semi-OSL with this green right here, and uh, I really liked the way that these turned out. And when I was done, I went back with the Typhus Corrosion and the Ryza Rust, just to add some rust features over the color as well. And there we have it. We got our 40K Necromunda post-apocalyptic sewer bill.
All right, so there it is, my very first piece of 40K terrain. I hope it didn't disappoint any of you hardcore Warhammer fans out there. I gotta tell you, it definitely looks out of place on my shelf with all of my D&D crafts, but I'm proud of it, and I'm gonna definitely put it up there on display. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more content just like this. And also, if you like the video, consider subscribing to help the channel reach its next 40,000 subscribers. Also, if you like the content, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. I've got 98 awesome patrons now, and I'd love to hit the 100 mark over there as well. All right, until next time, I'll see you around.